I will focus on the need to incorporate the contexts within which infectious diseases occur and the need for new partnerships to effectively prevent these. And I'll do this using three concepts to frame the contemporary context of infectious diseases, I'll talk about two challenges in applying these and propose one, one, uh, one approach. And I will do this focusing on cities because more people live in urban and rural areas. So the first concept is that cities are not just a destination, but can be thought of as an exposure that determine health. So we move to cities for health access, uh, employment, education, social connection. But in many cases, we instead get the S's from a high sugar and salt and stress environment to poor sanitation and social isolation, all factors associated uh, with increased vulnerability to disease. So when we think about preventing disease, we think we need to address the cause, which seem, might seem like an, important, an, an obvious question, right? So TB is caused by the TB bug. So the second concept I want to introduce is a concept of multi-causality. So for TB, for example, whilst the TB bug is a necessary cause for TB disease to occur, in order for the disease to manifest, other component causes will need to be present. Component causes like poor ventilation, overcrowding, etc. So that shows the importance of addressing this component causes thinking about prevention. And the third concept is that of the socio-ecological model, which basically shows that the ranges of, of causes range from the individual to environment to structural policies or the increased vulnerability. I like this because it really starts to get at the question what are the different kinds of prevention approaches that we can employ when thinking about prevention. So we can ask individuals to cover their mouths to prevent transmission. We can ensure communities have access to vaccines uh, and access to early diagnostics. But given the urban conditions, the S's, that increase uh, vulnerability to disease, how can we better align urban policies uh, for creation of health? So realizing that most of the factors that influence health actually lie outside of the health sector. I changed the focus of my research from studying the TB bug, I went back to my public health roots and set up a research initiative for cities health and equity, focused on systems for health, so really designing for health creation with different partners largely outside of the health sector. So we employ these three concepts to develop new partnerships for health across different sectors. For example, we've got a completed, recently completed project in health and housing policy, but essentially we found two challenges that need to be addressed. First is a need for integrated data systems, but we've come across barriers to addressing this, largely related to poor trust between sectors not used to working together. The second uh, was the assumption that the responsibility for population health lies solely within the health sector and as such uh, little or no accountability mechanisms for creation of health outside of the health sector. So one of the approaches that we're trying is the potential for distributed ledger technology to facilitate integration of data across different sectors and to enable better evaluation of the health impact of these and also to support creation of uh, incentive mechanisms. This kind of technology is obviously better known in the context of cryptocurrency, getting around issues of trust, and also in the context of personalized healthcare, so bringing different data points an individual creates to inform, to tailor their care. But the potential to integrate population level data across different sectors that influence health to actually uh, create health is, is, is a potential that is as, as yet untapped. So we've started asking, how can we do this? And we are now seeking partners to look at how to test this, the use of this technology to facilitate secure data sharing across these networks and also to look at how this can support the development of accountability mechanisms. Now, for this to, to achieve this goal, we need scientists with a new set of skills. And these are some of the initiatives that the Global Young Academy and this Future Africa initiative really build in the capacity to uh, create the scientists that can embrace this kind of complexity. And if we are to achieve this in Africa, we need this kind of human capital to be built to ensure that Africa is ready to address these three concepts, to tackle those two challenges, and to really harness the potential for 4IR technologies to create those new partnerships that are needed to prevent disease and to create health in our cities. Thank you.